So you've just picked up a pair of repeaters, and now you're asking yourself, whose man's is this? Also, what are some of the best repeater parts I should craft? Hi, I'm Zanny, and I'm a Dauntless partner. Today I'll be taking a look at various repeater parts, and why I think they're some of the best parts you can craft for your build. I'll also be going over my own dummy thick build that I use for most hunts. Let's get to it. Repeater barrels are probably the least interesting parts to talk about, mostly because the only thing they do is dictate what element you'll be using in combat. The Blizzard and Inferno barrels are going to be your top priority, as you'll be running into quite a few hunts where you're really going to want a Blaze or Frost weapon. Another solid option is fully upgrading the Standard Barrel, as the neutral element doesn't deal increased or reduced damage against any element. I wouldn't make this your primary focus though, because even though you won't have to change barrels, you won't get the damage bonus from using an element a Behemoth is weak against. Repeater grips change what your thrown ability is. Captain's grip will cause you to throw out an attack speed buff that can be picked up by a teammate, and if it's empowered, it'll grant the buff to the entire team. Saboteur's grip will cause you to throw out a mine that slowly arms itself, dealing increased damage if it's allowed to fully charge. If it's empowered, the mine will be able to interrupt behemoths and deal massive damage on impact. As a pro tip, you can throw the mine like a grenade when it's empowered, and it'll still interrupt just fine. It's something I do pretty frequently. Between these two grips, Admiral's Grip is probably the most useful in every situation, just because it's a straight-up attack speed buff. The only time I would use Saboteur's Grip is if I'm up against a behemoth with a ton of interrupt windows, like Embermane or Shrike. Chambers are pretty interesting, as they change your special ability pretty dramatically. Salvo Chamber fires a missile that deals damage on impact. When used while empowered, you'll fire three missiles instead, tripling your damage output. Marksman Chamber fires a precise shot, dealing damage on impact. If it hits a limb, that part takes 40% increased damage from your shots for 10 seconds. If you use it while empowered, that part will instead take 80% increased damage from you, and 25% increased damage from your allies. Fullboard Chamber was released this patch and fires a piercing shot in a straight line. When used while empowered, you'll deal dummy damage and get yeeted backwards. All of these chambers are pretty situational, and their effectiveness relies heavily on your skill level. Salvo Chamber is pretty easy to use and has a consistent, reliable damage output, while the Marksman and Fullboard Chambers are more difficult to use but offer a much higher damage potential. I would highly recommend Salvo Chamber for newer players, and Fullboard Chamber for players who are experienced enough to take advantage of its true potential. Now we move on to Prisms, the bread and butter that helps tie together your build. Out of the six available prisms, three are worth crafting, and only two of them are really worth using practically. The Brilliant Prism will occasionally charge one of your attacks, causing it to deal 550 radiant damage every 10 seconds. If you take damage, the charge rate increases from 10 seconds to something like 25 to 26 seconds at low life, meaning you'll never want to run this prism if you're using a build that has Iceborne, Rage, or Wild Frenzy, as they both rely on you taking damage in order to activate their perk effects. The Eclipse Prism gives you a chance to generate a Shadow Orb that increases your damage dealt by 2.5% for 5 seconds. If you have 5 or more orbs, that damage bonus doubles to 5% per orb. On paper, this sounds like it'd be pretty good, but in practice it turns out to be pretty mediocre. The chance to generate a Shadow Orb is based on how much damage each attack deals, with low damage hits being less likely to generate a Shadow Orb when compared to something like the Axe, which can generate multiple orbs with one hit. Because of this, you're really only going to be averaging about 10% increased damage, which isn't exactly the greatest when compared to the Brilliant Prism, and the Prism I'm going to talk about next. Searing Prism is ridiculously strong, as every 10th hit deals 250 bonus damage, and also increases the buildup of the Blaze status effect. While it might seem like a small bonus, it adds 250 bonus damage to your base attack damage. Let's say that without cells or perks, you hit for 100 damage. The Searing Prism bumps that up to 350 damage and gets multiplied by other damage effects, meaning you'll be constantly dishing out high levels of damage for absolutely free. If you're running a build that doesn't have a source of attack speed, but instead stacks a ton of damage perks like Predator, Rage Hunter, and Cunning, I would highly recommend using the Brilliant Prism for those fat damage procs. For general use, Searing is 100% the best, and can honestly be used with any build that has a decent amount of attack speed. The sheer damage boost from its proc is nuts. While that might cover it for parts, you can also equip a mod of your choice in the loadout menu. There are currently six mods available for you to use, but I'll be covering two of the best mods you can have in your build. Lucky Magazine gives you 2% increased crit chance for every bullet missing in your mags, up to a maximum of 24%. This mod can basically substitute for cunning in your builds, or you can use it along with cunning to hit a maximum of 39% crit chance on an empty mag. This changes the way you use your special ability, as you'll want to save it for when you're out of ammo for an even higher chance to deal double damage with a heavy hit. Lucky Magazine with Cunning while also using the Searing Prism is also bonkers, and I've frequently seen hits of 1 to 2,000 damage while rocking all three in my builds. While not nearly as impactful as Lucky Magazine, Extraction Catalyst reduces the cooldown of your abilities by 2 seconds when you dodge through a behemoth attack. 
This is pretty useful if you end up fighting a behemoth with a pretty aggressive attack pattern, like Koshire Shroud, and if you're running something like Evasive Fury in your build. I'm usually able to keep a steady uptime on my Admiral's Grip buff while using the Extraction Catalyst, and I can frequently spam my Salvo or Full Bore shots to maintain my damage output. Lucky Mag is a clear choice for being the best mod between the two though, just because Free Crit is a powerful tool to have in Dauntless. Before I go, I want to share one of the strongest repeater builds I've made using a combination of some of the best parts in the game. My build is focused around dishing out strong, constant damage through the use of Searing Prism and Lucky Magazine, supported by the Captain's Grip and Full Board Chamber. We'll be using a pretty big mix of armor to get as many plus six perks as possible, making our damage output absolutely, absolutely insane. 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 Predator is going to be our main damage bonus and helps to scale our early damage to get Behemoth and Rages faster. Rage Hunter gives us increased damage against enraged behemoths, which gives us 75% increased damage when combined with Predator. Cunning is going to thickify our damage, especially when combined with Lucky Mag to give us a whopping total of 39% increased crit chance on an empty mag. Conduit is our primary source of attack speed, and is shared between your teammates whenever you use your Lantern Hold ability. And finally, Etheric Attunement increases our Lantern Charge and reduces our tap cooldown, constantly giving us access to a ton of attack speed. This is probably one of my favorite builds for raw damage output, easily capable of taking down most hunts in 2-3 minutes or less, depending on the behemoth. And with that, we're gonna wrap it up. If you want to see more of my content, feel free to like and subscribe to my channel, and follow me on Twitter to keep up to date with my antics. I plan on making daily content for Dauntless, so feel free to check in and see what I've got in store for you. Otherwise, I hope you all have a great day. Take care. I'll see you soon.